Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Katie. In my last video, I showed you guys how to frame for a basement bathroom. And I told you then I was gonna make this video about how to frame a door. Here we are. Before we get into it, this channel is about DIY, home decor, and remodeling. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. As you can see, I already have my walls up and all of my layout studs are already in place. So if you wanna know how to get to this point, go ahead and check out my last video that's about how to frame in an unfinished basement bathroom. In a regular wall, you have a bottom plate and two top plates. My basement wall only has one top plate because it's not at all structural, but I'll go ahead and draw two just for the heck of it. A regular wall has a stud on either end as well as every 16 or 24 inches on center. I will mark out but leave out the ones that would go where my door opening is going to be. To frame my door, I need to know what my rough opening needs to be. A rough opening is the inside measurement of your framed opening. So what I want to know first is the width that my rough opening needs to be, and I will figure that out based on the width of my door. This is a door jam. A door jam is what the hinges on your door are connected to and what supports your door. And this is a door. You can tell because it has a door in it. So to figure out the width of my rough opening, I'm going to look at the width of the door itself. The actual door slab that I'll be working with is a 2 6 or 2 foot 6 or 30 inches. When you go to order your door, that 2 6 number is the width it will be sold by. So to figure out my rough opening width, I'm going to take that 30 inches and add 3 quarters of an inch twice or an inch and a half total to figure for each side of my door jam. Also called a door frame, which is apparently the term I decided to go with here just to confuse the issue since we're also talking about framing. Next, I'm going to add another inch for the half inch gap I need to leave on either side of my door jam so I can shim it into place when I set it. Which brings me to a grand total of 32 and a half inches for my rough opening for my 30 inch door. So that is the why behind figuring out the rough opening width for a door, but all you need to remember for setting any door in the future is that your door rough opening width is equal to your door width plus two and a half inches. Once I have my rough opening width, I am ready to lay out my door and install my king studs. King studs are the very outside of your door framing, and they're exactly like all of your other studs in the sense that they go all the way from the top of your bottom plate to the bottom of your top plate. And although the king studs get installed first, you actually begin by laying out the trimmers. Trimmers, also called jack studs, are what support your header, and they run in length from the top of the bottom plate to the bottom of the header. The distance between trimmers is your rough opening width. So when you are ready to lay out your door, you mark out the rough opening width on your bottom plate. This is obviously not actually 32 and a half inches, but let's just go with it. Next, you wanna mark out an inch and a half and three inches on each side of your rough opening. I'm gonna go ahead and square across both of these lines. My first inch and a half space is going to be my trimmer, so I'll mark that with a T, and my second inch and a half space is going to be my king stud, so I'm going to mark it with an X like all of my other studs. So that's an inch and a half trimmer on either side of my rough opening and an inch and a half king stud on each side of either trimmer. Once I have my layout figured out, I am ready to install my king stud on my X's. In my layout, both of my king studs had either a wall or a layout stud directly behind them, so I'm doing a lot of lateral fastening, but all you need is two screws or nails attaching your stud to the top plate and to the bottom plate. So I'd already checked that this existing wall was completely plumb. I was able to screw this king stud directly into the wall and know that it was going to be plumb all the way up. And as far as this one, I already had a stud that's on my 16 inch on center layout that was completely plumb. So I was able to hold this king stud directly to that next stud and know that it is also plumb. If you have a normal setup and don't already have two plumb surfaces to hold your king studs to, just get either your top or bottom in place, take a level, hold it against the stud, adjust the stud till it's plumb and then finish attaching the king stud. It does not have to be perfect, but the better your framing is, the easier it will be to install your door in the trim stage. Now I'm ready to install my trimmers or jack studs, so let's take a look back at my door to figure out how tall my trimmer should be. And again, I'll be figuring based off of the height of my door rather than the door jam. A standard door height is six foot eight inches tall, or 80 inches. 
And by standard, I mean that's what they all are, unless you order something custom. So starting with my door height of 80 inches, I'm going to add 3 quarters of an inch twice, or an inch and a half total, to figure for the distance that my door jamb extends below and above my door. Then I'm going to subtract an inch and a half for the depth of the bottom plate that my trimmer is going to be standing on. So that all basically cancels out. Then I am going to add three quarters of an inch for the estimated depth of the finished flooring that my door jam is going to be sitting on top of. Then I'm going to add another three quarters of an inch for shimming between the top of my door jam and the bottom of my framing header. Which brings me to an 81 and a half inch trimmer for an 83 inch rough opening. So again, that is how to figure out your trimmer height, but all you need to remember is that that number is always the same if you are working with standard height doors. 81 and a half inches for your trimmer length. So once I have two trimmers cut to 81 and a half inches, all I need to do is install them. So go ahead and nail or screw your trimmers directly to the face of your king studs. Once all of my studs are in place, I am ready to measure for, build, and install my header. The header sits on top of the trimmers and reaches from the face of one king stud to the next but it's actually most accurate to take your measurement from the bottom of your door opening. Measure between your two trimmers and add three inches to that distance. This will ensure that your door width is the same all the way up, even if your studs are slightly out of plumb. You will need to do more research if your door is in an exterior wall or if you are framing for a door that is wider than three feet. But for almost all interior door headers, you can make your header out of two by fours. First, cut two 2x4s to the length that you just measured for. Next, cut strips of half inch or 7 16 inch plywood to act as a spacer to sandwich between your two 2x4s. Making sure that all of your pieces are square and flush down the sides, go ahead and nail or screw your header together from both sides. Once my header is all put together, I'm ready to put it in place on top of my trimmers or jack studs toenailing it down into place and in from the sides. Once my header is in place, I'm going to carry my on-center layout across my top plate if I haven't already done so, and across the top of my header. I am now ready to install what are called cripple blocks. In structural framing, cripple blocks help to support the top plate over top of the header, or in basement framing like this, they will give the drywaller something to attach to. Cripple blocks are installed exactly like studs, in line with a 16 or 24 inch on center layout and with two nails or screws attaching them to the top plate and to the top of the header. And that is everything you could ever want to know and more about how to frame a door. But just in case I missed something, please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments down below. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please take a minute to hit that like button. And if you want to see more of me, don't forget to hit subscribe. I'll see you next time.